Let's take a look at some of the latest progress in Star Citizen development as of April 2022. We've got new missions, new AI features, some pretty interesting gameplay and location developments, and more. So sit back and enjoy. And don't forget to keep an eye out for that secret code that'll get you more entries into my Polaris, Scorpius, Tank, and Gladius giveaway. And thanks for coming to my Tomato Talk. All of those AI activities we've been reading about for a year now are starting to show themselves. AI content work in April saw AI NPCs now able to approach and interact with food vendors, obtain a drink or food item, and take it somewhere else to eat in privacy. Those shy eaters. After they're done, they'll dispose of the container in a recycling bin to be spawned out and be on their way. The next step is to implement the dynamic conversation system I covered in the AI tech section of the February monthly report. Remember, AI tech builds the feature for AI content to implement it. Work also began on a commuter NPC type that you'll catch taking trains and other transportation to different parts of the game. The AI tech team continued work on many of the tasks we've been previously informed of. This includes the AI navigation mesh, which will allow NPCs to roam the planets and the trolley system, which will allow AI to move cargo around stations and spaceports. The team also completed engineering work on the dynamic conversation feature I mentioned just a minute ago. Work now turns to providing characters specific lines based on their location and personal background. So a worker in Lorville will make a comment about a factory, while an outlaw in Grimhex might mention heightened security. The animation team began work on filling leisure areas with increased population density of AI doing random things, which sounds like it could be more than just the looking around that they do now. They also did facial animations for various groups including a new mission giver. This is pretty significant as the last time we saw any work on a new mission giver was years ago I believe. This could be another sign of the major features set to move forward as server meshing comes online. Animations were also blocked out for handheld gadgets and a new SMG, and an over-encumbered player animation received work. Character art continued work on pyro clothing, as well as Ninetales variants for clothing and armor. Variants we are already starting to see will be in upcoming events. I won't show the direct leak, but it's this one. The salvage backpack continued development, and new outfits for Stanton saw progress. Ship art, as always, is filled with news. The UK team finished up work on the Scorpius, while the Banu Merchantman, one of the most anticipated ships to date, progressed through the Greybox stage of development. Still a ways away from release though. Four other unannounced vehicles were also further developed. One is in the final art phase, two are in the white box phase, which is before Greybox, and one was completed art-wise. Keep in mind that these are four vehicles and not necessarily ships. But it sounds like the first will be introduced in the next month, two others may come within the year, and the last is way, way out there. In the US, the team put more work into the multi-crew Corsair, with much of the ship receiving its detail pass, hopefully to be ready for this fall. The weapons art team continued work on Banu ship weapons, for which we've seen a few. More alien weapons is a fun prospect as I think it gives the team more opportunities to experiment and explore. The animation team worked on the FPS gadgets like the door breaching charge, tractor beam tool, and cutting tool. And finally, they continued with the fire extinguisher that we'll be using to suppress fires in-game. The Gen 12 renderer transition continued as the company continues to implement the first version of Star Citizen's final renderer. We saw progress on planet terrain patch rendering, shadow rendering, and planet terrain height map rendering, with work starting on atmosphere and cloud rendering. With an update from the team in last week's Star Citizen Live, there's plenty more information on this transition, but I'm sure many of you have noticed some improvements already derived from these changes in Alpha 317. The good news is that's only the beginning of optimization.
In April, the characters and weapons feature team also worked on the fire extinguisher. This tool brings something to the table that they haven't dealt with before. A weird shape in the hands. It's an important addition though, fires are going to be a big part of Star Citizen. What else can you expect from so many of the team that worked on Far Cry 2? More than foliage though, these fires will be a danger because of the oxygen they consume in your ship. While you could vent your ship to fight these fires, you'll lose more oxygen that way. And as we learned in my last progress report, life support systems will be fine-tuned to the amount of people on board. The gameplay team made plenty of progress on the Drake Vulture's salvage mode, enabling it the same ability as the handheld tool. Surprisingly, the Reclaimer is also receiving the ability to salvage. This caught me off guard as I didn't expect the larger ship to see functionality for a while. It's a happy surprise. Work also progressed on the life support and engineering gameplay mechanics, two major segments of the game that will always have you wanting crewmates. The vehicle features team finished the setup for the hull A, tested updates to master mode and QT boost, both of which I have no clue what they mean, and planned additional support for refueling after its release this month. The lighting team focused on the upcoming Invictus launch week, completing various locations and points of interest to be involved in the 10 day long event and free fly period at the end of May. If you're interested in trying the game out for free, make sure to hit the link in the video description to create a profile. It uses my referral code and gives us both additional credits in game. The team also worked on the planet side reclaimer derelict, which is the first new ship to be added to the game as a derelict in four years. Speaking of points of interest, the EU Sandbox team is wrapping up work on several small locations that will be added to the game shortly around the Stanton system. I was surprised by this as well as I didn't expect additional Stanton locations until server meshing had arrived. Another happy surprise. Pre-production also went into new space-based locations we'll be finding and exploring in the future as well. New cave prototypes progressed with improvements to materials. Additionally, the initial release of the new Colonial Outposts is seeing a second round of content added to the Pyro system in anticipation of its arrival. The Montreal Locations team is approaching the last phase of development on the Reclaimer Derelict settlement and Reclaimer space-based points of interest we touched on during my last update. The former of those is very reminiscent of the test location this same team did to become comfortable with the game engine early last year. Those space-based points of interest I mentioned a minute ago progressed through the gray box phase and further progress was made on the major update to Lorville, the first city that was added to the game. At this point, the city pales in comparison to the others in scale design and profile. This update will do a lot to improve the look and prepare the city for upcoming features like building interiors. The narrative team continued to support upcoming dynamic events and their missions, figuring out how to incorporate a new gameplay module into a specific mission. It's good to see them experimenting with more segmented and complex missions that take advantage of new mechanics. Planning also began and talks were held with the Montreal team about several upcoming missions. Earlier this year I theorized that new missions would be the key to a successful year for Star Citizen. I'm excited to see if they do make so much of a difference. The UI team progressed on the star map and radar UI last month, with basic controls being implemented alongside the ability to see planets, orbits, and vehicles in the map. They also began adding a panel that will display the details of a selected object. The visor and lens conversion to building blocks saw work as well, which will make the HUD much less glitch prone and allow devs to likely start adding and tweaking augmented reality items in our HUD. The team also developed an additional feature that will replace the canvas slice technology introduced last year to develop 3D UI. We've known that the 3D implementation of building blocks was a bit behind the 2D version. It's good to see development continuing forward. A new card system is also being tested out for a first implementation in the salvage game loop. Finally, the team worked on a new augmented reality marker system, which really needs an update to make navigation and understanding the world around us easier.
In VFX, the team worked on the salvage effects of the hand tool as well as the effects of the Vulture salvaging ship. This has proved a bit more difficult due to the change in perspective from the personal on foot tool to a full ship. Elsewhere, the VFX team worked on several upcoming ships, the Scorpius, Vulture, and an unannounced ship. And last but not least, the team continued to experiment with better ways to communicate fracture geometry on ships to help sell the realistic effects of the damage map system. If you enjoyed this progress report and want to keep up with Star Citizen development, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want more in-depth videos about the deeper development of the game, check out my YouTube channel member or Patreon support options, where you can support what I do and get exclusive videos every month. Also, if you missed it, make sure to go back through this video and check for the secret code that will give you more entries into my Polaris giveaway after Invictus week. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.